traditionalism is a spiritual and intellectual movement made up of a number of groups and individuals, united by their common obligation to the work of French metaphysician René Guénon. He was the founder of the traditionalist school, and the movement is sometimes called Guénonian, although its precepts are considered to be timeless and to be found in all authentic traditions. It is also known as perennialism, the perennial philosophy, or Sophia Perennis. The term Philosophia Perennis goes back to the Renaissance, while the Hindu expression Sanatana Dharma, eternal doctrine, has precisely the same signification. According to the traditionalist school, it is possible to discern a primordial and perennial truth manifested in a variety of religious and spiritual traditions. Ananda Kumaraswamy explains, The metaphysical philosophy is called perennial because of its eternity, universality, and immutability. It is Augustine's wisdom uncreate, the same now as it ever was and ever will be, the religion which, as he also says, only came to be called Christianity after the coming of Christ, and so long as the tradition is transmitted without deviation. William Stoddart explains, The central idea of the perennial philosophy is that divine truth is one, timeless and universal, and that the different religions are but different languages expressing that one truth. The symbol most often used to convey this idea is that of the uncoloured light, and the many colours of the spectrum which are made visible only when the uncoloured light is refracted. In the Renaissance, the term betokened the recognition of the fact that the philosophies of Pythagoras, Plato, Aristotle and Plotinus incontrovertibly expounded the same truth as lay at the heart of Christianity. Subsequently, the meaning of the term was enlarged to cover the metaphysics and mysticisms of all the great world religions, notably Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam. So what is the teaching of the Sophia Perennis? Firstly, that there exists a divine reality underpinning everything, and without this, no thing and no one would exist. God, Brahman, Tao, the Absolute, all terms that point to the one underlying ultimate reality. Secondly, the divine reality may be directly perceived under certain conditions, through prayer, meditation, near-death experiences, mystic revelation, psychedelic drugs, religious ecstasy, inspired ritual, or super-rational intuition. Humans possess a dual nature, the little egoic me of day-to-day -day living and the true self that reflects the divine reality. And finally, people long to reunite with that divine reality from whence they came. And this is variously called salvation, enlightenment, self-realization, or Buddhahood. And this is ultimately the purpose of all religion and tradition. Ganon writes that the Philosophia Perennis is by no means a philosophy, that is to say one particular conception, more or less limited and systematic, and having this or that individual as its author but is rather the common foundation from which proceeds whatever is truly valid in all philosophies. The designations traditionalist and perennialist are nearly synonymous and are, for all intents and purposes, interchangeable. All of the major writers in this area wrote of tradition. By this they meant the entirety of the intellectual, religious, cultural and artistic aspects that tie a people to a revelation or to a sacred origin. Thus, such an entity as this tradition is itself considered sacred. All things centred on this tradition, such as civilization, its arts or crafts, doctrines, all can be referred to as traditional. Traditional is not used by these writers in the modern conservative sense to just designate cultural artefacts passed along from one generation to another by sheer habit. Instead, it is used to indicate, for example, those civilizations whose ideas, practices, creations and so on are still guided and formed by the attraction and the principles of the domain of the spirit. People who study tradition are called traditionalists and all such traditionalists accept the premises of the perennial philosophy. As Shuan remarks, a nostalgia for the past is in itself nothing. All that is meaningful is a nostalgia for the sacred which cannot be situated elsewhere than in deliberating now of God. The traditional school insists on the necessity for affiliation to one of the normal traditions, 
or great ancient religions of the world. The regular affiliation to the ordinary life of a believer is crucial, since this could give access to the esotericism of that given religion. Most traditionalists, such as Ganon himself, found a way in Sufism and embraced Islam. Ananda Kumaraswamy was a Hindu, while others, such as Wolfgang Smith or James Kutzinger, embraced Catholicism and Orthodox Christianity respectively. Some, such as Marco Pallas, found a way in Buddhism. One term that often crops up in the writing of traditionalists is Kali Yuga, or Dark Age. From Hinduism, the traditionalist authors adopted the doctrine of the Four Yugas, or Ages, a teaching they believed had a similar expression in every ancient tradition. According to the doctrine of the Four Ages, the real meaning of history is not progress, but increasing involution while the Golden Age passes by. Our materialistic era corresponds to the Age of Iron, the lowest degree before a new cycle. Our modern way of thinking is a wasteland. It is in the final stage in the decay of truth, rather than its pinnacle. History, from this perspective, is a series of steps downward, whereby new religious and esoteric systems are fragments of the truth, rather than being new innovations or developments. We now live in the Kali Yuga of the Hindus, the Iron Age of Hesiod, the Germanic Ragnarok, according to the traditionalist school. Politically, this age is characterised by the falling away from tradition, the worship of materialism and the generated forms of knowledge like rationalism and scientism, the disappearance of spiritual hierarchy in favour of the doctrine of egalitarianism, and the governing of the materialistic masses through democracy. In the case of Ganon's traditionalism, there was more than a revival of an old wisdom. He added to it a conviction that European civilization was in terminal decline, having lost even the memory of those eternal religious truths that are the only basis of genuine civilization. Ganon and his followers were convinced that these truths could be recovered from surviving non-Western religions, principally Hinduism. A major theme in the work of Ganon is the contrast between traditional worldviews and modernity, which he considered to be an anomaly in the history of mankind. For Ganon, the physical world was a manifestation of metaphysical principles, which are preserved in the perennial teachings of the world religions, but were lost to the modern world. For Ganon, the malaise of the modern world lies in its relentless denial of the metaphysical realm. The quintessential Ganon is to be found in two works which tie together some of his central themes, The Crisis of the Modern World and his Masterpiece, The Reign of Quantity and the Sign of the Times. Ganon unfolds a startling thesis about the present terrestrial situation in the light of the doctrine of cosmic cycles, whereby humankind is seen to be degenerating into an increasingly solidified and materialised state, more and more impervious to spiritual influences. Inversely, the world becomes increasingly susceptible to infernal forces of various kinds. The forced convergence of different civilizations is the spatial correlate of the temporal unfolding of the present terrestrial cycle, moving towards an inexorable cataclysm. The best illustration of his concept is found in Ganon's elucidation of quality and quantity. For Ganon, quality is the epitome of the age of gold, when true spiritual experience was found by excelling in one's exploration of self as part of a vital spiritual tradition. The opposite of this is what is found today, an emphasis on quantity, units and the lowest common denominator. Instead of emphasising how we can raise levels of education, skill and awareness, we talk about averaging, affirmative action, political correctness and educational adjustments due to minority status. Quality is embodied in skills, crafts and personal ability. In a word, achievement. Quantity is embodied in reducing humanity to numbers, units and a cog in a wheel. Modern employment, for example, has reduced most jobs to quantity. Most people can fit into an office or a factory job. No special skills are warranted or required. Modern man has become a faceless number or an equation. And this is the reign of quantity. Genon's belief in the inevitability of these forces of decay led to a pacifism and disengagement with the day's politics, believing that only the return of the rule of a spiritual elite could reverse the trend. 
Political traditionalism was in fact established in the 1930s by an Italian, Baron Julius Evola, on the basis of Nietzsche as well as Ganon. Evola was less interested in esoteric aspects of the original religion of humanity, which was the main focus of people like Ganon and Shuan, than in other varieties of esotericism, including magic, and in what he saw as the decadence of contemporary Western civilization. Although concerned by spiritual and esoteric questions as much as Ganon was, Evola focused not on religious practice but on spiritual values, for example those of medieval chivalry. He initially hoped to transform Europe through the possibilities that seemed available, notably the fascist regime of Benito Mussolini and the SS, though he became critical of both fascism and national socialism. Penning the book Fascism Viewed from the Right, and his most directly political book, Men Among the Ruins. Evola died relatively unknown and pessimistic about the hope for change. His revival started only in the 1980s, but since then he has become one of the most widely read thinkers of the radical right. If Evola's influence is visible on the radical right, the influence of the traditionalist school remains visible in the field of comparative religion, with prominent religious scholars considering themselves successors to the school. While the ideas of traditionalism are increasingly reaching a receptive audience in the Eastern and Islamic world, which Ganon hoped would be able to resist the materialism of the West.